They made boats in Canada and the US, and they made over 8,000 of them. They were well known for being most sailors' first boat, an introduction to boat ownership. But I bet most of you have never heard of them. This week on Everything You Need to Know, we're talking about Tanzer. When we talk about a super successful first boat, a sailor might get into sailing on, there's a lot of names that really come up. For me, it was a Chrysler 22. For many people, it's a Catalina 22, or maybe a small C and C. But around the Great Lakes, another name comes up all the time, Tanzer. Tanzer was a sailboat manufacturer that started in Quebec, which is a small French-speaking country up here in Canada. A joke, Quebec isn't its own country, but they usually think they are. They're a fairly independent and proud part of Canada, and it's one of our most beautiful provinces with some really awesome people. I've been there a few times. A man called Johan Tanzer founded the company back in 1966, and they made boats for almost 20 years before going out of business. Johan actually designed most of the boats himself, but despite not being a world-renowned designer, turned out some pretty amazing boats. Tanzer eventually went on to become one of the biggest boat manufacturers in Canada at the time, and even started making boats in the U.S. on the East Coast in North Carolina and the West Coast in Washington. While Tanzer is well known around here, the history lesson just isn't very deep. There isn't a big interesting story like all the other boat companies we usually talk about here. Johan opened it, they made some boats, they went out of business. That's honestly about it. Johan himself has a bit more colorful history. He was born in Austria in 1927. By 1941, he started an apprenticeship at a boatyard. The yard was building racer, cruiser, sailboats, and a couple of different motor boats at the time. However, even though he had some good designs to his name, the world was changing. When he completed his apprenticeship in 1945, he was drafted to the Navy on January 3rd, his birthday. Happy birthday. By 1956, Johan was out of the Navy and again free to pursue his legacy of building boats, and he immigrated to Canada with his sailboat designs that he wanted to start building. But of course he needed money, so when he got to Canada, he got a job and he worked in the aerospace industry for a while before he broke away to found that company. Because the story of this company is so straightforward and we don't really have a lot to talk about on that, we're going to talk about a couple of Johan's boats. boats you may actually know because there are a lot of them. First, everyone's ideal first sailboat sort of a thing, the Tanzer 22. Like almost every ideal first sailboat, the 22 was small enough to single hand, but forgiving enough that you could learn on it as your first boat. They built it through fiberglass, little bit of wood trim to make it pretty, a regular sloop rig with a transom hung rudder. Pretty common stuff for boats of that era and that size. For the 2,900 pounds the boat weighed, it managed just over 1,200 pounds of ballast. So it was just tender enough, but it wasn't dangerous and it could handle its own if you were out in a chop. The interior is what you would expect on a 22-foot boat, but the real magic of the 22 lies somewhere else. The magic is in the ownership of these boats, with the advent of sailing nets early on through email, and eventually forums and social media and groups the 22 has rose to stardom in its owner's forums, and it's actually rose to stardom also in one design race leagues. The North American network of 22 owners means owning one of these makes you immediately part of a huge family. And I can't say enough about a boat that has good group owner support. Any problem you might have, you can bet somebody's already figured out how to fix it. And you're always just a Google search away from all the help you could ever ask for. While the 22 fin keel was fairly common, the boat also came with a centerboard option, and it weighed 200 pounds more if you got the centerboard option, and brought the ballast up to 1,500 pounds. And for a little bit, they made something called the 22 C4, which was a centerboard made for IOR racing, which is interesting, in the quarter tonner league. Um, the rules changed right after they made the boat, so there aren't very many of those out there, you'll probably never see one. The 22 is built to the same standards as just about anything else back then. So if you're looking for a first boat and you come across a Tanzer, it's well worth a look. At this age, you likely won't find a really nice example of this boat, but they're cheap, they're easy, and that's exactly what you want from a first boat. You don't even know if you're sold on sailing yet, so you might as well get something cheap and easy that's going to teach you everything you need to know. 
Lady K Sailing is brought to you by patrons, people who give a couple of bucks an episode to keep this channel improving. A big shout out to the latest people who have joined to help, Ben, Jim, and Robert. Thank you guys. If you consider the Tanzer 22 to be an ideal first boat, then you might also consider the next boat we're going to talk about to be the ideal second boat. After all, once you get a 22, you'll just be yearning for a few more feet. They call it two foot itis. So your second boat might be a Tanzer 26. This boat is very common up here on the Great Lakes, and many people own their 26 for their entire sailing life. It's just small enough to be easy to lake sail, but big enough that you can weekend on it if you want to. And the same as the 22. The 26 is a simple fin keel, regular sloop rig, transom hung rudder. Simple, easy to live with, easy to maintain, and easy to single hand as well. The model weighed just shy of 4,500 pounds and pulled off 2,000 pounds of ballast, so it was pretty stiff. And on the 26, an outboard engine was very, very common, but you could order it from the factory with a choice of a diesel inboard, a, a Yanmar, but it was a Japanese-built Yanmar. The 26 didn't get ordered with this very often. And the 26 did the usual thing inside with the V-berth followed by a setting down each side, but it also sported a quarter berth, which if you have one, you know, they're a great place to store everything you have on your boat that you don't use. And remember, this is a 26 foot boat, but you get an anchor locker up front, which is sort of rare. And you get a fuel tank locker out back for the outboard. That's honestly really nice on a boat this size. You have a place for everything and everything in a place. On a 26 foot boat, it gets cluttered very, very fast, but this helps a lot. You can also seat six in the back if you need to. And when you go for a sail, if you know what you're doing, the hull speed is just over six knots. If you find yourself in a club environment where people are racing and you also want to take the family cruising on weekends, the 26 is actually something you should really look at. It's a very competent club racing boat, PHRF rules. And if you're in that sort of atmosphere where it's not super, super competitive, um, it's just a fantastic boat. And then there's enough room for the weekend booze cruises. Like most Tanzers, the 26 has a huge support system, online forums, groups, and the owners have even figured out a new rudder design that improves on the one the factory used. That's pretty cool. Before going out of business in 1986, Tanzer went on to make some 8,000 boats, with the largest being a 31-footer. None of them compared to the fame of the 22, but all of them were reasonably well made and they sailed fairly well. None of them came with a particularly bad reputation except in one area. And this is a matter of opinion. You may totally disagree with me and that's okay because that's what YouTube comments are for. While they are great boats, I have to say I can always spot a Tanzer from a nautical mile away. No matter which model Tanzer it is, I know it's a Tanzer. And specifically it's because I think they're kind of ugly. And hear me out, there's nothing inherently wrong with the brand. I just find them to look a bit weird. All of them, like take the famous Tanzer 22 for example, at first it's a wonderful choice of boat, but so is a Catalina 22, and you can kind of see the difference between the two. The Catalina is just more traditional and I think a little bit prettier. The flat top design of a lot of the Tanzers is what people recognize most, and while this does reduce windage and race boats do tend to use this design, and look at the Cal 25, this boat isn't a race boat, it was never intended to be, so why make why not make the top taller so you have more room inside and you get a little bit more traditional look? I just don't understand the why. They did the more traditional look on the 26, however. Instead of a flat top, they gave you some more interior room. But again, they did so in a weird way. They made the roof round. Uh, and I know traditional sailboats with a coach top like that, there is some roundness to them. But the shape of the coach top usually flattens out at the top. And Tanzer didn't do that. It's just round. Now, don't get mad at me. I'm not knocking the boats. They're wonderful to own. They're wonderful to sail. They've always had just a different look to them. And you may love that. You may not love that. Either way, if a Tanzer comes your way and you're in the market for something like that, they are well worth a look. 